In this video, I'm going to show you how to scope Pikachu in Blender. Pikachu. Hello, 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 and welcome to today's sculpting session. What we need first is a sphere. Add a sphere to the scene, and then we can go straight into sculpting. The first thing we need to do is we need to remesh the sphere so we don't have any errors while sculpting, especially when we use dynamic topology. Then we can switch to the grab brush and make sure to enable symmetry so that we can work twice as fast. Then we can go and push one of the sides of the sphere a little bit I guess uh, into it, that's going to be the place where the face is going to be. Next up, we're going to reshape the sphere a little bit more so that the head shape looks a little bit more like, I guess, Pikachu-like and more like a trapezoid. Push the bottom a little higher and then the corners a little bit more to the side so that it looks a little bit more blocky. Afterwards, we're going to go and enable dynamic topology with these settings. Make sure to copy them. Now we can use the clay strips brush to lay out the first parts of the face. The first parts are going to be the mouth as well as the nose and also the cheeks. It doesn't have to be perfect, so just, you know, lay them out so we can have a general idea of where everything will be placed. Afterwards, we're going to use the grab brush just to kind of pull out the, the mouth a little bit uh, out of the general shape so that we have more room for the rest of the face and give it a little bit more depth. Next up, we're going to use the crease brush so that we can add the eyes. You can make the crease brush quite strong for this one. Uh, so you can dig quite deeply quite quickly this way we can lay out the eyes very quickly and of course if you need to adjust the eyes in some way you can always use the grab brush to you know change the shape or bring it a little bit further back how i did it here for example next up we're going to use the clay subs next up we're going to use the clay subs brush once again to lay out where the i guess ears or antenna should be we're going to draw basically these circles in the area where we think we want to place them and then we're going to use the mask brush mask out that area and then control I to invert. And then we can use the snake brush and pull out these two antennas so, so that we already have the antennas, I guess, in terms of their length. To make them a little bit thicker, what we can do is we can just use the inflate brush, brush over it a little bit, make sure that the brush is quite big so we can affect both sides of the, uh, of the antenna. And then we have perfect, flawless looking antennas already there. We can also use the crease brush to just sharpen up the transition between the ears ears antennas okay i need to get used to that <laughs> and the head and then we can go straight to the next part see how fast we're moving insane <laughs> uh the next part is going to be the body for the body we're going to use the clay subs brush once more we're going to lay out where the body would basically come from so we're going to use the clay subs brush and basically draw like a circular shape at the bottom of the head and then we're going to use the mask brush to mask out that area Control i to invert and pull it out with the snake hook brush. Make sure that the snake hook brush is nice and big, so that we don't lose a lot of volume while pulling out the body shape. We're gonna bring it down and backwards a little bit, and then afterwards we're gonna broaden the bottom of the body a little bit, because Pikachu gets quite thick at the bottom, so that it looks a little bit like, uh, you know, you can probably guess what I mean. We also need to add a little bit more to the back side of Pikachu, so we're going to use the snake hook brush there again and pull out a little bit more geometry so that we have a nice round bottom, let's say. Once that is all done, the shape should look something like this. Next up, we're going to separate the belly from the legs. Pretty simple. We're going to use the crease brush and just create these two creases. Well, only one because we have symmetry enabled. This separates basically the belly from the legs. And then we're going to bring it forward a little bit so that we don't lose uh, too much volume. For me, it was a little bit too thin, so I broadened it a little bit with the grab brush. And then I used the clay brush to give it a little bit more roundness and also ease the transition between the legs and the belly a little bit. Let's add the arms, pretty simple as well. We're going to use the clay strips brush once more, lay out a circle where the shoulders are supposed to be, sculpt a line of where the arms should kind of go to. It doesn't have to be perfect, we can finalize or we can fine tune them a little bit later. We can use the crease brush to separate the belly from the chest a little bit. And then we can use the clay strips brush to give it a little bit more volume, just so that it looks a little bit more, I guess, fluffy. And after adjusting the butt a little bit as well, give it some more thickness, we go to the tail. For the tail, we can use the mask brush to mask out where the tail should originate from or grow out of. Then we can, of course, once again, control I to invert. We can use a new tool, the move tool, switch to that. And then we have this gizmo here with these arrows we can then draw out basically the masked out area we can pull it out basically which just you know moves these vertices a little bit further outwards which means that they're being stretched so what we need to do is we need to 
use the clay strip brush to give it more geometry. So just brush over it once so that the geometry isn't as isn't stretched anymore. And then we can basically repeat that process um, by masking the top part, moving it upwards, then doing the same stuff there, uh, giving it more geometry, masking the side again to move it outwards. And we do that a few times so that we get this zigzag pattern for the tail with, of course, uh, the tail being broader and broader or wider and wider um, as you get as you reach the top. Once the shape of the tail is done, we can use the grab brush to add just a little bit of, uh, I guess, imperfection into it to make it look a little bit more organic and natural. Also, if you notice that the tail loses some thickness at the end, you can use the inflate brush to just, you know, brush over it a little bit and give it a little bit more thickness again. Make sure that you only use the inflate or grab brush. All the other brushes could lead to problems right now, uh, which we're going to cover a little bit later. Afterwards, we're going to use the proximity mask function hovering over the tip of the tail and then pressing shift a and then moving the cursor all the way to the root of the tail so that we can select only the tail and then afterwards we can use the mask brush to finalize the mask and then i want to convert the mask area basically the body to a face set because what we're going to use now is the pose tool with the pose tool or pose brush make sure that you use these settings with these settings you basically set the rotation point of the pose tool right where the transition from one face to the other one is. Then we have to disable symmetry. Then we can go here to the root of the tail and then we can move it to the side. Make sure that the cursor is somewhere down there. Otherwise, it can lead to some weird rotations. To make the rotation a little bit more natural once more, I like to use the grab brush, change the fall off actually to linear, and then I can adjust the tail a little bit more so that it looks a little bit more like it's hanging over, looks a little bit more like it's actually soft. Once you're happy with the tail, we can go over to the legs. For the legs, what we need, of course, are two ankles. To do that, we use the clay strips brush once more, draw out where the ankle should originate from, of course, from the bottom of the body, and then we can use the mask brush once again, invert, and we can draw out the ankles. For me, the ankles were actually a little bit too far forward, so I brought them back a little bit with the grab brush, and then I selected like a ring at the bottom of the ankles, and then I used the snake hook brush, changed one setting in the snake hook brush, which is the magnify setting, which basically works against the inherent sort of volume loss that the snake hook brush has. And once you have that, you can basically just pull out the feet from this little stump. Once we have the general length, we can go to the bottom and adjust the shape of the foot so that it looks a little bit more, I guess, foot-like. <laughs> there you go. We can also use the clay strip brush and the crease brush to just add a little bit more shape and add the toes already into the feet. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're still in the blockout phase. So if you, you know, if it doesn't look perfect right now, you don't have to worry. Now that we have all the pieces that we need for the sculpt, we can now go into the adjustment stage, which means if you have anything that you think should, you know, look a little different, you can do that now before we go deeper into the refinement stage. It is time to add the eyes. For the eyes, we can just add a sphere to the scene and make sure that we rotate it by 90 degree on the x-axis that, so that we can see the, I guess, vertices rings from when we look at it from the front, basically. For later stages, I also want to add a subdivision modifier that not only makes it smoother, but we also have more vertices when we actually paint the model. Level of subdivision, I guess, depends on how strong your PC is. You know, you can also choose a lower resolution. I actually apply that subdivision modifier because we want to use these vertices sometime later. Afterwards, I'm going to add a mirror modifier to the eye and use the sculpt as the mirror object so that I can place the eyes on both sides perfectly symmetrical. I make sure that the eyes in terms of size are a little bit bigger than the eye hole and the pivot point, the little orange dot in the middle of the sphere, should be in the middle of the eye hole, basically the visible part of the eye. Once the eyes are in the perfect position, we can go straight back to sculpting and in scope mode, we can now adjust the eye hole a little bit. If the eyes don't sit right or the eye hole just looks a little bit different than what it looked like before, we can now adjust that there. I also use the crease brush just to kind of sharpen the eye hole a little bit. I think that looks a little bit better for mine. You can also now switch to the eyes and mask them out so you can already see what, you know, the actual eyeballs in the end are going to look like. To switch to between different scope objects, you can press Alt-Q while hovering over the new object that you want to switch to. Let's add a little bit more character into it. We can just select one of the antenna and mask it out. Keep in mind with the post brush, if you have converted your mask to a face set, to use the rotation origin face set, the one that we've set in the beginning, 
If you haven't, then you should use topology, otherwise it can lead to some weird rotation point origins, I guess. Yeah, so always keep that in mind. Then we can use the post brush to make the post brush long enough so that the axis, the little line basically goes all the way to the root of the ear. And then we can move the uh, antenna into the right position. I like to put it a little bit lower and then the other one a little bit higher. The next step is going to be a little bit more time consuming in the end. What I want to do is I want to tilt the head back. So what we can do here is we can select the head, for example, with the lasso mask tool or just the normal mask tool. Hold shift with the mask brush to smooth out the mask edge. Then we transfer the mask area of the body to a face set. And then we can use the post brush once again. Wait, I come from the future. I forgot to tell you before you tilt the head, okay? Keep that in mind. Before you tilt the head, make sure to disable symmetry. Otherwise, you're going to ruin your scope, okay? And then we can use the post brush once again to tilt the head back a little bit. What you then can immediately see is that the eyes are in the wrong position again. What I would recommend is to remove the mirror modifier and then apply it again, and then just go into edit mode and move the eyes apart so we can see both, change the distance between the two eyes in edit mode and change the rotation of the eyes in um, object mode until you basically place all both eyes perfectly as they were before in the eye hole. Now it is time for our almost perfect sculpt to be even perfecter, okay? We disable dynamic topology and then we can use remeshing. We're going to use the selection tool here to determine the geometry resolution and then we divide that resolution by two or four depending on how strong your PC is. Once we divided that we have to of course hit remesh and then we can use the crease brush to add more detail to certain areas. For example the mouth and the nose as well as the arms or hands or paws whatever you want to call them. Keep in mind you can use symmetry on everything that isn't the tail or the head. So if you work on the body and you for example refine the arms then you can use symmetry otherwise make sure to disable symmetry. Uh, this way you can work a little bit faster. I forgot to actually enable symmetry which is why I had to sculpt the hands twice. After you fully refined your sculpt we can then use the smooth brush and smooth out all the rough areas to make it just a little bit smoother. This way we can get rid of the sort of geometric look that we usually get when we sculpt in Blender. But that already has a problem. Pikachu now looks like it's naked, I guess, or just a little bit too smooth in general. So what we need to do is we need to bring back the fur. We can use the clay strips brush. We set it to a low strength and then we basically just brush the fur back on the surface. It creates these nice lines on the surface which looks already like fur so all we have to do now is basically follow the flow of the fur that we kind of imagine or that we can maybe even see but it's not going to change the volume that much it's only really there to add a little bit more detail to the surface before you get to the tail there's one thing that i want to mention though make sure to go to the advanced tab and enable front faces only otherwise you can run into these weird artifact problems which can very easily be avoided by using the front faces only function. But if you run into this problem, you can also fix it by just enabling front faces only and then filling the hole once again. We can then afterwards, just to refine the fur even more, use the smooth brush and then hold control to use it as an enhanced brush to enhance the fur structure even more. And now we get to the very advanced detailing. If you fill up to the challenge, it's not really a challenge, but if your PC can actually handle it, let's say, then you can follow this. We now just divide the resolution once more by two or maybe four, depending on how well your PC runs. And then we use the draw brush, use this custom fall off with the custom stroke spacing of 5%. And then we can use this brush as a very fine hair brush to add even more detail into the whole fur structure, basically. And after that's done, we can see the final scoped. But of course, we still need to add color because otherwise it looks kind of boring. It doesn't look like Pikachu. It looks like some weird fantasy hamster. So let's add some color into it. Let's add a color attribute layer. Switch the view more to attribute so we can actually see the colors. And then we can use the paint brush and scope mode to draw in the other colors. For example, the black color for the antenna tips and eyes and mouth as well, as well as this brown for the back stripes and the tail root, I guess you could call it. And then of course the red cheeks. To make the transition between the colors a little bit more natural, use a very small brush and basically just brush out these individual hair strokes to make the transition look a little bit more hairy, like a furry color transition. Switch to the eyes, make sure that you don't apply the mirror modifier. Then we can go into the middle of the eye where the geometry sort of converges together into one point. Shift A and then go outwards to create a circular mask. And then we can fill that mask with a nice brown color, create another circular mask, 
make this one a little bit smaller and then fill that with black and we have the eyes and if you see that you get these weird saw like shapes you can fill them by just painting with a paintbrush and filling these gaps basically afterwards in shading we can use a color attribute node plug that into the color of course of our shader and then select the color layer for the body as well as the eyes so that we can see the colors in the render as well if you have any questions or maybe even sculpt suggestions what we could sculpt in the next sculpting session put those in the comments thank you for watching maybe i'll see you next time see ya